What is going on everybody? It is Sean here today. Got a little deck profile for you guys for Purple Luffy, which is the deck that I've been running for the OPO5 format. So if you don't know what Purple Luffy does, it is activate main once per turn. You may add one card from the top of your life cards to your hand. If you have zero, three or more Dawn cards on the field, add up to one Dawn card from your Dawn deck and set it as active. So basically you take the top of your life, you can ramp one. And I mean, in this game, card draw is very powerful in the One Piece card game if you're new. Um, so with like what we've seen with Whitebeard. So this deck can pop off really fast. It's very high risk, high reward. So as long as you know where you're going and you don't take your life down too much, uh, this deck can do uh, really well. So I'm just gonna kind of go over what I'm running. Um, the changes that I've made, I've made a lot of changes with this deck. Um, since OPO5 came out, or the start of OPO5, this deck was very different. But then with weeks of testing and doing playing in a couple of webcam, well, playing in a couple of tournaments and a webcam tournament, I've changed quite a bit. So I think a lot of Purple Luffy players have changed their deck up quite a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and cover it for y'all. But uh, if you're new here and you're new to One Piece, please like and subscribe. I got plenty more videos up here. Um, but let's get into it. So starting off, we have four page ones. Um, is a four cost 6K vanilla. So obviously it's pressure on the board, but uh, the main thing with this that you wanna keep in mind is the page one ulti combo, which I will grab here in a second. But yeah, it's also a counter. So I think running four of these and four of the ultis is really powerful. And I think it's just necessary because it's just, it's such a great way to start off the game. So here we have the ulti. So you want to run for each of these. So ulti is dawn minus one. You may um, play one page, one card with a cost of four or less from your hand. So an ideal like turn two with purple Luffy going first is you go to your three dawn turn, you, you swing for five or swing at whatever is on the board and then you take your life and ramp one and you play ulti minus one play page one so you have these two you have these two on the field and it just gives you such an advantage it puts you um so far ahead against your opponent so this is also a 2k counter so uh, they're both counters so late game you can use them for whatever so they're not just dead weight in your hand so i think these are excellent and they're very vital to early game i think early game they are very strong and then next up we have 4x drake this card i really just use for the 2k counter i don't ever really play it i have seen some players use it to make them discard their card if their hand size is looking a little scary but yeah, I really don't use it a whole lot. It's really just there for the counter. But uh, I, it's nice to have 2K counters that actually do stuff. So I think this is a solid option for a 2K, like the ulti. And then next up, we are running three poly. Poly is really good. It is a five cost 6K and it is on play, play, you can rest to Dawn, add up to one Dawn card from your Dawn deck and set it as active. Then if you have eight or more Dawn cards in your field, K up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of four or less. So that's really good because not only are you getting an active Dawn, but you're also gonna be able to KO one of your opponent's uh, bodies on the board. Now it is seven costs, doing that with its effect is seven. And I'm running three, I was originally running four, but I, again, a lot of the changes that I made, it doesn't have a counter. So I think that this is really good kind of mi um, mid early game, but I think, you know, the later you get into the game, this card's effect doesn't come as valuable. So I think three is a good spot. I think four was just way too many. And again, like I said, late game, it just ended up being dead weight, like a couple of the cards that I'll get into, but three, I think is a really solid, number for those and we have three gum gum jet gatlings i originally had blast breath at the start of this deck but i think this card is just a little bit better because it's a zero cost and let's say you have like a poly or a magellan or the seven cost kid you can trash one card from your hand and gain plus three thousand so that's just a ton of value for a zero cost card and just trashing one especially late game um it also has a trigger that add up to one Dawn card from your Dawn deck instead is active. So that's also really sweet. 
But yeah, I think this is the better of Blast Breath. I think it's just, it's really solid. And I think three is pretty good. I don't see a whole lot of people running like four, but I think three is the solid choice. Then we have Two Sheep's Horn. This is a card that just got added pretty recently because I saw somebody won a tournament, I believe, in Los Angeles, or they got second with Purple Luffy. But I have no shit won some one games with this card because it's like, you know, if I'm playing against Sakazuki, can rest their Borsalino, or if I'm playing against Cat, rest one of their Brulees, but is a two cost, Dawn minus one, rest up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of six or less. So I think with the six or less, that helps out a lot, so. I think two is really solid. And I think this was one of the big changes I made to the deck because I didn't have any of these um, starting out, but it's really solid. I definitely, if you're not running Sheep's Horn in Purple Luffy, you should definitely look into it. I think it is a very solid card. It's not very expensive either. Then we have three of the seven cost kids. I think most of us know what this card does is it's on play or when attacking Don minus one, or sorry, your leader gains plus a thousand until the start of your next turn. So Luffy becomes a 6K on your opponent's turn as well. And I think this card is like controversy because I think a lot of people are saying that this card isn't as good as we thought it was going to be. And that's why a lot of people have been cutting it because again, kind of like the poly, it ends up being dead weight, but it is really valuable and you can use it for a lot of good things. I think the key to this card is just knowing when to do that Dawn minus one because sometimes it's really useful and sometimes you just want to get it out there to have an 8K on the board, but yeah. Like a lot, I was running four at the start of this deck and I cut down to three because again, I ran into this issue where it was late game, didn't have any counters, needed to stay alive for one or two more turns and this card just wasn't doing it. So I think this card is good in a way. I do think maybe it was a little overhyped. I know that everybody was saying that this was gonna be the best card in the deck and it is really good, but I think three is, I, I definitely was, happy with the choice of cutting one out and I don't use it as much as I guess I thought I was going to but I mean it it still gives you value so it's still worth running for sure then we have four Freynoskes it is a five cost uh 4k and 2k counter and Dawn um sorry Dawn one if you have eight or more cards on your field this character Dawn cards on the field sorry this character gains rush so this card is valuable outside of its counter. Like I said, I a lot of the 2K counters on here besides ulti, I really don't play. I've played it a couple of times, but I've never, it's never really won me any games. I know that I've seen some players who have used this and have actually won games. And I think that's cool, but I personally, in my experience, I have not had that happen. But like I said, it is nice to have 2Ks that, you know, are useful for their counters instead of just having them for 2Ks. So. I think running like this X Drake and obviously ulti are like solid choices. I think those, if you're looking for 2Ks for this deck or you're just trying to figure out which one's better, I think that one is really solid. And then we have four of the kid blockers. Now me personally, this is one of my favorite cards in the deck. And I mean, ooh, look at that alt art, so beautiful. But uh, yeah, blocker, um, when a Dawn card on your field is returned to your Dawn deck, add up to one Dawn card from your Dawn deck and set it as active or sorry, yeah, and set it from your Dawn deck and set it as active, yeah. This card is just insane, it's just, it's great. I mean, it combos with a lot of stuff in this deck, so you're pretty much not losing a Dawn, so. And it's once per turn, it's not an on play, so it's it happens um, once per turn on, yeah, on, our, on your turn. But, I mean, it's also a blocker, so and blockers are very strong, so. I think this card is really solid. I think you should definitely run for it. It also has a counter. I mean, if we're being honest, this card would be good even if it didn't have the counter, but the fact that it has a counter on it as well, you should definitely run four of these. So yeah, their value and they're just, they combo, like I said, they combo really well with so many cards, like the nine cost Kaido and so many more. And we have four of the starter deck Queens. This card, Man, this card took me a while to get my hands on because I mean, I mean, we all know how the TCG market is. It's just going all over the fucking place. But this card is really good. Again, it's hard to find. It is a five cost 6K and it has a counter, is a blocker and Dawn minus one, you can draw two cards and trash one card from your hand. So it's a blocker, but it also lets you clean up your hand. So I think it's really solid for that choice. 
And I mean, obviously you're gonna need blockers to survive in like any game. So I think this is these and the kids are really solid. I haven't really seen too many other players sub these out because I think they're just really vital. And they're also just really good for like late game if you don't have any 2Ks and you need to you know kind of stick it out a little longer, can help you grab that or just grab whatever. So yeah, I think they're pretty vital to this deck. Then I believe these are the last of the blockers. We have three of the laws, which again was running four, but I did decide to cut one, but is a four cost 5K, um, has a 1K counter. And Dawn minus one, if your opponent has seven or more cards in their hand, trash two cards from your opponent's hand. So I think that is really useful. I think that's really strong, obviously, against Whitebeard, against Anel, even Katakuri. So trying to play it for that, but also getting a blocker out, I think is really solid. So I definitely think it's worth running. I think the on play is the reason why this might be a bit more applicable than some other like purple blockers, but just really trying to get rid of your opponent's hand size. But I think three is really solid. Like I said, I had four and just recently cut it out. That was like, I think the most recent change I made to this deck. So I think four is fine too, in, in case maybe you don't have um, one of the other queens. I think that's a solid pick as well. And then we have two of the starter deck kings. Now I took out one of the laws and put one of these in because they were actually doing really well during testing. So is a uh, six cost, seven K on play, Dawn minus one K up to one of your opponent's characters at the cost of four or less. So pretty similar to the poly, but you're getting a 7k on board and it's only Dawn minus one. So yeah, this card performed really well. I think somebody had recommended me to play. I had one and then I added another one because I just, it was doing really well. But you know, just also having that pressure on the board is really important. So I think these are solid additions and you know, they're worth adding if you don't, if you haven't added them or have been considering to get a little bit more pressure. Cause I know, there is the seven cost 9k vanilla, which doesn't have an effect, but it also has a counter. So if you just want more pressure on your board, because really the main like big guy that you want to get out is the nine cost rush Kaido. But I think these are really solid and I think they've done really well when I've play tested them. And then next up we have three Scratch Men of Who. Again, more vanillas, four cost 6k vanillas. Four cost 6Ks are just really important. I think that turn is just really vital. So be, having some in your deck, especially in this deck is just really important. And again, more counters. So this card isn't just dead weight. So you, you know, you can play it. Like if you don't have the ulti page one, you know, you can, you know, go to four and play this. You can swing first, go to four, play that. So at least you have something on the board, so. I think having these just in general are just really important. And I mean, there are other four cost six Ks, but I think this was just the one that I just picked just cause it was just easy. It was just accessible. So the next up we have four Magellans. Now this card is very important, especially against like Sakazuki cause Sakazuki ideally is uh, Pluffy's worst matchup. I think this deck overall does really well against Anel. I think it does really well against Cat. I think it does well against Red Purple Luffy. So it does well among most meta decks. I mean, our worst matchup is Sakazuki, which is no surprise there. But basically five cross six K on play, Dawn minus one, your opponent returns one Dawn card from their field to their Dawn deck. And then when this character is KO'd on the opponent's turn, your opponent returns two Dawn cards from their field to their deck or to their Dawn deck. So they return two Dawn cards to their Dawn deck. So. This card is just really good, throwing people off curve, whether you're, again, playing against Sakazuki or Cat. So, you know, Sakazuki, I think, wants to go second. So if they go second, you can throw them off their curve or Cat if you lost the dice roll. But also being a five cost 6K, it's just more pressure on the board. But they, the difference is, is that your opponent kind of has to respect this card because they're obviously not gonna wanna return to depending on where the game is. Maybe later game, they won't care as much because they're just gonna get that Dawn back. But early on, this card is just really good. So yeah, I think a running four is good. There are times where I'll have like maybe two of them in my hand and it's really late game and it's kind of shitty because I can't use them for counter. But I think, overall compared to like the poly. I didn't want to get rid of four of one of these. I decided to get rid of the poly because I think that, you know, throwing people off curve is just super important. 
And then lastly, we have the big man himself, the nine cost Rush Kaido, which is a 10K. And it has on play, Dawn minus five, K up to one of your opponent's characters with a cost of six or less than this character gains Rush this turn. So yeah, this just screams pressure. This is how you really change the game. When you drop this card, I mean, yeah. The only downside is, is that like you can't pop like Borsalino or something like that. I got into situations like that. But any other character that's again, 6K or less, um, it's just, it's such a vital turn and it's just so important. Cause I mean, having to be able to swing with it the term it, turn it comes out and then just having that on the board unless they bottom deck it or find a way to remove it from the board. So yeah, this is like the main kind of boss character that obviously you're wanting to get out. I know some people will run the 10 cost purple Luffy or some other stuff, but I just think that Kaido is the best option. I just think it for its effect and what it does, it's just, it's very vital to this deck. Now I've, I was running four, then I cut down to two and then I went back to three because I think three is the sweet spot because when I was running two, I wasn't seeing this card as much and you really do want to see this card. Again, it's a vital part of the deck. So I think three is the perfect number. But anyway, guys, that is it for this purple Luffy deck. Let me know what you guys think or if you decide to run it. Um, I've had a lot of fun with it. I still have a lot more tournaments and events to go to to use it. But like I said, if you're new here, please like and subscribe. I have plenty of more content coming, especially for new players. So until then, next time, see ya.